As the race towards fully autonomous vehicles accelerates, one company is looking to merge cutting-edge AI with luxury design in order to create the next generation of personal transport. Join us now to discuss their vision for the future of luxury mobility are the Chief Marketing Officer and Chief Business Officer of Tensor Auto, Amy Luca and Hugo Fazzati. Amy, Hugo, welcome to you both. Thank you for being here. Thank you for Thanks having for having us. us. Absolutely. Let me start first and foremost, Hugo, perhaps with you, an overview of Tensor. What makes your luxury robocars different from other competitors on the market? Yeah, sure. So so thanks for that. Um, why we're different? Well, this is the world's first level four vehicle uh, that you can buy. So this this hasn't existed, you know, before. Um, you know, we've we've done this again from the from the ground up. So um, if you look at the existing, you know, vehicles that are that are out there today in, in level four vehicles, these are primarily uh, retrofitted uh, vehicles used for for robo taxi. Um, however, you know what we've done is we've built, we've designed and built, you know, this vehicle from the ground up specifically for level four. So this is this is very very key for many reasons, um, you know, safety, privacy, uh, you know, uh, even the, the just down to the um, you know handling of 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 a level four vehicle, um, all of these everything changes when it comes to level four. So it's not it's not a technology that you can just um, you know turn into a, a you know add add a feature to a car. You really need to design everything around um, the level four technology. Make sure number one it's safe. Uh, number two it's scalable, um, and number three um, you know. There's privacy uh, because right now, um, you know, you're you're effectively bringing, you know, your living room, your office, your family room, you know, into you know, into your car. Your your car is now becoming those rooms, and so it's important that uh, privacy uh, that you remain private and and, and in those rooms. Yeah. Amy, why, I suppose is my question, Amy, why would someone want to own a personal luxury robocar? Who do you see it as being ultimately the, the demographic for this type of very inventive product category? We're at the beginning of, of a new market of personal autonomy. And I think anybody would want to have their own personal vehicle. If you look at the U.S. market for uh, personal vehicle ownership, it's it's huge. And I think we're betting on the idea that uh, that will translate into wanting your own fully vehicle in your garage, not having to rely on on hailing a taxi. Uh, I think the other reason why it's so uh, interesting for tomorrow's consumer today is that this is gives back some creative time. So one of the things we talk a lot about, sir, is the idea that your own personal robo car is giving you that freedom to do a lot more than just focus on the road. Uh, and it's a really strong uh, need and market fit for our car and everybody's garage in the future. So Hugo, your goal is a company, high-end EVs that consumers can buy. And if I'm not mistaken, please correct me if I'm wrong, they can either drive themselves or, of course, to the spirit of really what we're here to talk about, allow the cars to do the driving themselves. Yeah, that's correct. I'll just the, 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 what are the main considerations of that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say one, one, one clarification there, one correction. Um, it's not really an EV, right? I mean, it's it's not a high end EV. I mean, at mm -hmm. the end of the course, it's electric, uh, fully electric vehicle. But um, it's it's I don't think it's it it gives its justice it gives it justice to just put it in the in the category of EVs. Um, what this is is a new way of living. Right. Um, this is a, a fully autonomous level or vehicle. So, you know, EV is, let's say, automotive 2.0. So automotive 1.0, internal combustion engine, automotive 2.0, um, electric vehicles, automotive 3.0 is fully autonomous level four vehicles. Uh, and, and that's really, uh, you know, this is a category defining product, um, you know, the world's first that, uh, that, you, can, that you can own. Um, and so it's, uh, it's, it's an agentic vehicle. Uh, you know, we didn't talk about that yet, but really it's, uh, uh, you, you know, you can have a relationship with it, right? You can go and tell it to, to park. Uh, you can go tell it to, to go and do things for you. So it's going to be working for you. Um, it's a, it's a totally different way, uh, really of living, 
Um, you know, in the past, you know, you sort of that time, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, um, work that needs to be done to scheduling the car, going to get it maintained or serviced or whatever. But, you know, in this case, um, it's very different. You know, we have, we have uh, over a hundred sensors on the car. Uh, and so, you know, these sensors, um, you know, are, are self calibrating, they're self cleaning, uh, they're, they're, uh, really a completely different. Um, you know, we have, um, the world's most powerful, uh, automotive grid supercomputer that's ever been put inside of a vehicle. Uh, 8,000 tops. So 8,000 trillion operations per second. We've done this in conjunction with, with the latest, uh, you know, uh, uh, tour offering from NVIDIA. So it's a, it's a shift from uh, horsepower to, to brain power, um, allowing people really to enter the world of AI, which, which we're already in. So. Yeah. Uh, Amy, a true consumer car, of course, it has to work anywhere, not just under the watchful eye of a carefully geofenced area, the way we see a lot of players in the robo taxi space we always follow talk about the maps in a place like austin texas you can go here you can't go there san francisco waymo making headlines this week they can finally extend down to sfo airport how do you ensure that building a true consumer car that you can effectively build and adapt that technology to work anywhere i think hugo touched on it a bit at the end of the day, it's really coming down to regulation and how um, governments decide the regulations around level four autonomy, autonomous vehicles. From a product side, uh, it's our technology. And I think our technology really sets us apart in terms of how much uh, tech is on board to ensure that we're not uh, stuck in a grid or stuck in a map. And key to that technology is uh, our LiDAR technology. and um, is the LiDAR technology is, you know, five LiDARs, 11 radars, 100 sensors um, total in the car that is second to none in the industry. And that technology uh, lends itself to safety. So I think there's been a lot of high profile, um, you know, uh, high profile incidents that have been in the news lately related to whether other technologies that are strictly camera based are going to be safe enough um, for that type of out of the grid uh, mode. And we believe that our technology is really poised to be that safe and trusted technology. So people don't feel uh, like sitting in the back seat is taking a risk uh, and they don't have to be so vigilant um, in the car. And I will note that in our level four drive mode, um, it is hands off. It's eyes off. There is no steering wheel. So the car and tensor is completely in control of the drive. Um, and we feel really confident that our technology, like I said, over 100 sensors, five lighters, 11 radars is really going to be uh, what will set us apart. I was just going to add to that, Amy. Um, you know, one of the things that we stand for as a company, you know, is, is freedom, is autonomy. We want people to own their autonomy. Uh, we really want them to have the choice uh, to drive when they want to drive, which is why we went through um, a very, uh, let's say, important and technical exercise with our with our supplier base to create the world's first um, production foldable steering wheel. So the, the, the steering wheel folds away. Um, it also folds out when you do want to drive. So um, this this again, you know, when you're in our, uh, let's say, tensor approved uh, geo, uh, then you don't, you know, you don't need to drive, right? Um, uh, but if it's outside of that geo, of that geography, of that ODD, that operational design domain, um, you know, then you can drive, right? You can, you can, you know, kind of drive wherever you want, or, or even if you are inside of it, you can still drive. So the point is, we've designed this around, um, you know, around the end user's freedom, and, and, uh, and, and, you know, uh, however they want to use the, the technology. It's a really exciting technology coming at a really cool time. Amy Luca, Hugo Fazzati, my special thanks to both of you from Tensor Auto. Thanks a lot for being with us today. Good to have you. Thank you so much.